Oh, welcome. I'm Chief Mike Peterson with the Preston City Police Department. It's great to have an opportunity to be filmed again and to address the citizens and all those who are, have interest in Preston City and, and the things that are happening here. Today's May 15th uh, and it's, it's National Law Enforcement Memorial Day along with Law Enforcement Memorial Week. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy and, and a joint uh, resolution in Congress declared the day of May 15th as National Law Enforcement Memorial Day where they recognize nationally all the peace officers who've lost their lives in the line of duty. This year alone there's been over 53 officers who've lost their their lives in the line of duty which is you know sad. One, one loss is, a, is too many but um, unfortunately we're on track nationally to break last year's numbers which was over which was 135 officers. So you know, we, we recognize that this week at our police department and, and we join hands with our brothers and sisters across the nation in recognizing all those who've lost their lives and, and the ultimate sacrifice in keeping their communities safe. So today is part of that. Um, we're wearing uh, black bands over our badges to, to commemorate that as well as um, last night in city council meeting the, the city council of Preston introduced a resolution recognizing this week as Law Enforcement Memorial Week as well. So um, we're gonna take care of our officers this week, feed them a little bit of lunch and let them know how much we love and appreciate them and all they do. So um, that's, that's Law Enforcement Memorial Week. Uh, this year, one of the things that I brought with me when I came to the city was a program that we call Lunch with a Cop. Um, and you know, we have three schools in the middle of Preston City itself, the high school, the middle school, and then the elementary schools. And uh, our focus, at least for the last couple of months, has been on the elementary schools. And uh, what I've done is I've, I've asked the officers on one day a month to go over and to have lunch with the kids uh, during just their regular lunch time. And what the school's done is they've partnered with us and they, they've worked with their teachers and staff and, and picked out a half a dozen kids, up to a dozen kids that, that either need some recognition or have done something great in the school. And they uh, come and sit at a table with us and we eat school lunch with them and they ask us questions and we interact with them. And then we present them a little uh, certificate of, of recognition that they took part in our Lunch with a Cop program. And then uh, we go out for the rest of their lunch hour and spend the, the time with them on the, uh, the playground. And interact with the kids and it's been a lot of fun it you know our officers have, have really embraced this program and they spend uh, that time out on the playground just interacting with the kids I've seen them play tag with them I've seen them shoot baskets with them you know the kids talk them into jumping around on the monkey bars and the and the playground equipment and it's it's really just been a, a very positive experience and then we've shared some of those pictures on our Facebook page and some things just to let the public know you know that the, we're concerned we're interacting with the schools and and we just you know we we want to take care of our youngest constituents and it's just turned into a lot of fun it's been a fun program for the kids it's been a great program for us here at the police department and uh, i'm looking forward we, we did our last lunch with a cop day yesterday on the 14th of may and uh, i'm just looking forward to carrying that on next year when when school gets back up and running one of the things i like about preston city is our low crime rate um, the, the majority of the calls that we take, uh, people calling in and asking for assistance are what we call service calls. And so we unlock a lot of doors, car doors with people, you know, lock their keys in their, their car accidentally. Um, we help people out as, you know, in a lot of different situations, but our crime rate's quite low and, and I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm glad that the citizens feel comfortable that they can call when they need help and that we're taking care of each other as a community. One thing that has come up though that we want everybody to be aware of is some card skimming that's been happening. Now I want to recognize that that's not unique to Preston itself. This happens all over um, and it just so happened that, that we had some skimming devices show up in, in Preston. We had the same thing last summer, unfortunately. Um, we were able to work with the FBI and some authorities in Florida, believe it or not, and, and they actually made some arrests on some people last year that were, that were skimming card numbers in our, in our area and linked it to a, just a really kind of a nationwide um, crime spree. This year, again, we've had some, some skimming devices show up and, and uh, once again, we're dealing with about a dozen um, victims that have had their, their information taken 
and and then tried tried to use down on the Wasatch front of Utah. So Davis and Salt Lake County is where all of our leads are taking us now. Um, these are really hard to track. They're really hard to, to follow up on, and, and I've got a couple of guys in the department that are that are dedicated to doing the follow-up work on that and the investigative work on that. They're working with authorities on the Wasatch Front in Utah as well as, as some local um, businesses obtaining some um, uh, footage from surveillance cameras and, and, and different cameras from different businesses trying to, to identify suspects, but it, it's taking us a while to do that, but we're dedicated to, to getting that done. What I'd like to just, the, the citizens, just to remind them is to, uh, you know, when, when you're, and, and this particularly happens at gas pumps. Um, for whatever reason, the, uh, the criminal elements identified gas pumps as an area that's, that's it's easy to access. Believe it or not, most of the gas pumps in the country work off just a, a, a few master keys to actually access the inside of the pump. And so uh, as you're getting gas, just, you know, uh, be careful, just, just be observant. You know, if, if the card goes into the gas pump hard or, or there's some resistance, just, you know, maybe change pumps or cancel that service and try something else. That, that's one of the things. Um, the other thing too is just to, to trust your um, card companies because they're really vigilant in trying to identify uh, fraudulent expenses. And, and honestly, the card companies that we've worked with so far this, this spring have been really good about working with the the people that are that have accounts with them and things like that. But if you do get a phone call from your card company um, asking you or telling you that, that there's some fraudulent um, activity on your card, take it seriously and uh, work with them. And, and if there's anything we can follow up and help on, please report that to us at the police department so that we can uh, we can help you know identify and, and try to link all of these together. Um, we're confident that we don't have any card skimmers in in. The city right now, I, I'm pretty. I'm confident that we've that we've been able to work with business owners and and remove those. Um, they're hard to identify. Again, just you know, if, if something doesn't feel right or look right as you're using your card, maybe cancel that transaction and move to a different pump or something. But some of those are actual inside the machine. They gain access inside of the of the pump and they they replace one of the the interface cords. And, and you just probably wouldn't know that that's even happening. And then the device saves the card information and then, and then transmits it, uh, usually through a Bluetooth connection. So again, we're confident that we've got the card skimming devices out of the city. We've worked with, the, with all the, the local businesses that have gas pumps and we've had uh, encouraged them and asked them to check and, and we haven't had anything else provided to us. So we're working those cases. If, if anybody has any fraudulent claims on their cards. Again, work with your bank as best as you can. They're really willing to work with you and then get that information to us so that we can follow up on it. You know, our Facebook page has been really valuable to us in getting information out to the citizens and, and I've been really happy with how the citizens are interacting with us. Um, my One of my family members the other day said, sometimes we think the only thing you do is, is catch stray dogs because that's all that ever shows up on your Facebook page. At least from their perception it was. But Honestly, that's worked out really good for us because we've been able to reunite dogs with their owners fairly quickly using our Facebook page. But just just a good reminder for people, you know, make sure your dogs are locked up. Make sure you're following city ordinances when it comes to leash laws and, and keeping your animals restrained. Um, we're good to, to pick those dogs up and try to reunite them with an owner. But the sad fact is, is not all dogs get reunited with an owner. And, uh, you know, we, we hate that to happen. But uh, if people would just re be reminded of the... The, the ordinances that, you know, the dogs need to be taken care of, they need to be restrained and, and kept on a leash and, and kept in yards and not out roaming around in the city. It, it would, you know, really help out the situations we have, as well as barking dog complaints. You, it, you'd be surprised at how many phone calls we get at the police department for, when, you know, when people are at work, their dogs in the backyard barking or things like that. And, and we do our best to follow up on those and work with people. And, and we just ask for the same for the same thing for for neighbors to help each other out and to just be aware of of what's happening in the neighborhoods we're getting geared up for all the summer events it's going to be you know another fun action-packed uh, summer with the the rodeo in july and and the, and the three days of parades that go along with that we're expecting to at least triple the amount of people in in the city during those three days and we just ask everybody to be patient as they come and take part in the city celebrations to come and enjoy yourself and have fun 
Um, but just be patient when it comes to traffic um, diversions and different routes as we prepare for the parade. And, uh, you know, be patient if you have to park a ways away and walk to the parade routes. Just, again, you know, use caution, use patience, and let's just enjoy the summer the best we can together. Are you going to get out and dance with the <laughs> Well, <laughs> I, that, I understand that's happened in the past. I'll probably assign that to one of the guys. I'm not much of a dancer. <laughs> Yeah, we you know we we love to interact with the public. That gives us an opportunity to 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 really kind of be ourselves, and and, and it's best if we're not chasing down problems and having to deal with issues. It's best if we can just you know all get along that way and just and really enjoy the events. That's what we're looking forward to. Again, I'm Mike Peterson, Chief of Police with Preston City. Appreciate the opportunity to interact with you. And if you have any issues, feel free to contact our our office at area code 208-852-2433 or stop in, we're happy to help you out with what we can.